Hey y'all. Hello from Twin Oaks Family Farm in rural Southeast Ohio, USA. Thanks so much for joining us on our YouTube channel, Twin Oaks Farm Poultry. So we're checking in on the Cornish Rock Cross Meat Chickens. There are 425 of them in this flock in production for poultry. Uh, we're only going out to 35 days production length on this flock. Our preference, our personal preference is about 42 days but uh, we are finding that we want to try to get a certain size chicken for our clients. We direct market the poultry that we produce. And we find, interestingly enough, that most of our clients that get whole chickens want a four to four and a half pound whole chicken in the freezer. And our 42 day production schedule will tend to get us a five to five and a half pound or even six pound whole chicken in the freezer. So, uh, you know, we're trying to find the spot where we can consistently and efficiently produce the size chicken that we know our clients want, okay? And so other than whole chickens, our most popular products that we produce from raising the meat chickens is boneless, skinless chicken breast and chicken patties, ground chicken patties. So those are made out of the drumsticks and the thighs from the chickens. So something we find with Cornish Rock Cross meat chickens is that there are a lot of factors involved in raising them that are very consistent and very predictable from flock to flock. But the other thing we find is that every flock we observe something new or experience something new and Every flock has to deal with unpredictable conditions. That could be ambient temperature. That could be something that happened in shipping when they were being transported through the postal service from the hatchery to the farm. There, there just is always something that we have to adjust for and that we, we learn something new from. And so with this flock, uh, we've experienced a few things that we've never experienced before for one thing they really don't have as heavy an appetite as we are accustomed to seeing cornish rock cross meat chickens have the only explanation we can come up with for that is when this flock was like two weeks old and three weeks old we had really extreme heat and you know at that age birds like this want to be 90 degrees Fahrenheit ambient conditions around them and 85 degrees ambient conditions around them. But we had temperatures, you know, like real feel 100 plus. And it's so warm with meat birds, that will tend to make them not want to be active. So that will tend to also take them off of their feed. Okay. So at that point in, in growth, we should have seen their appetite double, if not triple like going from week two to week three. And we didn't see that. And so we feel like that's impacted them. And for one thing, got them behind what we think they should have consumed of their feed by now. It's also got them, we feel a little bit behind on their growth, okay? So that's one thing we're dealing with with this flock that we've never dealt with before. And so, so even as you see them here, They've, they've been active today, they've been up to food, but we just, we need to see them at feeders, not just in like two or three at a time, but we should be seeing all these birds at feeders, okay? So that's unusual for meat birds. Uh, so the other thing going on then is kind of compounding that set of problems. This is one of the biggest flocks we've ever raised. We've just uh, just this summer, we did a flock of 400 plus right before this group, and now we've got this flock of 400 plus. But this group in particular is on the shortest production length we've ever attempted. I mentioned our personal preference is 42 days. This group is in production for 35 days. So all of a sudden, it's the, it's, it's the trifecta nightmare for us for raising meat birds. It's the very worst combination we could have come up with if we had brainstormed, like what would be the, the worst set of circumstances with meat birds? Well, <laughs> decreased appetite, 
slow growth, getting behind on target feed consumption, and a shorter timetable would probably be the very worst situation we can imagine. And guess what? That's the situation. <laughs> That's the situation. We have the shortest production table time-wise we've ever dealt with. And, and we chose it, but we have to choose it way far ahead. So this, this timeline from hatch to harvest, which for this flock is July 22nd, 2024, was hatch, not July 22nd, I'm sorry. That's when, that's when the previous flock went to processor. This flock's hatch was July 24th, 2024, and their processing date is August 28th, 2024. So it, it's, it's 35 days, it is the shortest timeline that we've worked with. And we had such high heat their second and third week, it set them back on, on uh, feed consumption. We think it impacted their appetite. And because of that, we see slower growth than we've seen in previous flocks. So it, it, it's, it's like a nightmare. <laughs> so, so we're hopeful. So see, at this age, we start to see some of that posture and y'all are just seeing in the background. But, but we're hopeful that they have turned a corner. We've seen appetites improve. We've seen water consumption improve. For example, we were only having to fill these waters once a day um, prior to like three, four days ago. We have capacity for at least 50, pan, uh, 50 gallon of water on the floor space at one time. Yesterday, this flock drank 100 gallons of water, so that's good. And yesterday, they consumed about 250 pounds of feed. So at this point, 425 birds uh, in here. So at this point, if we could see them average 200 pounds of feed a day, we'll get the feed used that we planned for them. So that's what we're trying to trying to accomplish. The other thing going on today is we're going to put some new bedding down in their pen here, especially around the waters and ar around the feeders. We need some new bedding. Something else we're doing to augment their eating is not only do we have their, their big feeders that are intended for these kind of birds to feed out of, we also went ahead and added in some makeshift feeders. These are actually the bases. Yeah, they, they are pretty reactive. That's normal for them. We are using these bases from the single gallon waters, filling those up and encouraging them to go to food there. And we have these homemade feed trays there. So we'll just walk around them and get them to move a little bit. And that's the practice that we use throughout the day to get them to go to feed. And they're, they're, they're very reactive. So you see these strong reactions from them. Nobody's doing anything negative or detrimental to them. But, you know, as a flock, they just have these strong reactions and that causes the other birds to react simultaneously. And it, it looks like, you know, a collective panic. But it's, it's just them kind of getting out of their own way. But we need them to walk around to keep their legs strong. And they're, they're kind of bird brains about their their activity level uh you know they'll kind of just sit around and really their only drive with cornish rock cross meat chickens really one of their few drives is to go to food but since we're dealing with a group that seems to have a suppressed appetite they don't go to food as frequently as other flocks we've raised did so it also helps when we move them around to exercise their legs it also helps kind of jog their memory like oh I think I'll go eat some food now. <laughs> so, so we want to keep, we just, we don't want them getting upset or stressed. We want to keep them going, getting some food. Whoops, sorry, birdie. So we'll give them, you know, we'll go through and fill these. But today's weather is pretty good for them. Whoops. This age of birds, they're almost four weeks old. So they want to be, they really want to be about 80 degrees, or see, so you no. Know, um, yeah, they really want to be about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's actually, amazingly enough, a little on the cool side today. So that's that's kind of what is tough about raising Cornish rock cross meat chickens when you're sort of subject to the ambient weather conditions and ambient temperatures for where you live. It's never perfect. It's never perfect. And we're always working around and working with 
uh, what is what is the temperature today? And chances are it's not matching the temperature that they want. But um, you do your best, you know, to try to help them be comfortable. So they would like it to be about 80. I believe it's about 70. So that's not too bad. But tonight is going to get cool. So we'll close the barn up and they, they have body heat. And we'll put fresh bedding down. And it'll be nice and dry. And, and that will help them too. So there's some of the bedding we'll use. So at any rate, about four weeks old going to processing in a week but you know really what bird brains we have these great feeders here very very minimal participation at, at the feeders they're intended to use and we we put these makeshift feeders down and they're all over them so but that's okay i mean at this stage of the game for the the money investment you have in them and the time investment you have in them and the commercial goal of the operation you know, at this stage of the game, you're like, well, if that's what it takes to get them to eat, that's what we're going to do. So, so anyway, so we'll be uh, cleaning those trays out, putting feed in those, and we'll just transfer it out of these to put in those. But then this evening, we're going to hope to be able to put in these 15 feeders at least 200 pounds. And all together, they hold about 500 pounds. So hopefully we can accomplish getting at least another 200 pounds of feed on the floor because all that feed right there, we gotta feed it. We need, we need to feed that all in the next week to this flock. But I'm looking forward to getting some fresh bedding down on the floor. They, they really, uh, Cornish Rock Cross meat chickens, as they drink water and as they eat, they, they create a heavy manure load. So that's one thing you're raising them. Be prepared to give them plenty of bedding material on their floor to absorb the manure load and to keep them dry and clean and to keep their skin healthy. And that really helps in the production as well. So, so thanks for joining us for a check-in on these birds. Please consider a membership to our channel. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please support local agriculture wherever local is for you, whether it's produce or proteins. You can source food from local farmers, ranchers, and producers where you live and support local ag and we also encourage you if there's something you want to raise or grow we say go for it if you have questions about raising meat chickens or even egg production chickens we have some of those too feel free to put questions here in comments we'll help if we can so so at any rate uh, life on the farm is anything but laid back love that old john denver song that starts with life on the farm is kind of laid back but Life on the farm is a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work, too. <laughs> and sometimes it's a lot of worry, but, you know, we're going to get through it. So, hey, thanks for supporting our channel. We appreciate you. We hope you have a super day. And we sure hope that these birds are on the verge of heavy appetites and fast growth. <laughs> thanks so much, y'all.